When you're testing transformers, you need to understand that there is a variety of transformers that are used in control of HVAC equipment. This particular video training program is going to focus on these different transformers and how to use an ohmmeter to check them to make sure you understand whether they're good or whether they're bad. Hi, my name is Jim Johnson and I'm going to be your narrator for this fundamental approach to testing transformers. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about the various types of transformers that are used in HVAC systems for control purposes and we're going to talk about some fundamental issues about transformers and how they're constructed and different types of transformers you need to be able to test to find out number one, are they okay or have they failed? And number two, when you install a new transformer to make sure you're doing it in the right fashion. And what we're going to do is begin our discussion on transformers by taking a look at the schematic symbol for a transformer. What we want to point out here is that we're looking at the primary winding of a transformer. We're looking at the symbol in the center that indicates some type of laminated plate. And then we're also going to be looking at the secondary winding of the transformer. We want to point out that understanding this from a schematic perspective helps us test transformer windings in the correct way. And what we're going to do now is show you the very simple approach to following that schematic and using that information to test the windings of a transformer. Let's take a look first of all at the primary windings. We have one wire connected to the neutral side. This is a 120 volt primary and the other side connected to the hot side. And what we're doing now is testing for resistance on that primary winding. And what you can see right there is that our meter is showing about 19 ohms resistance. Now when we switch over to test the secondary winding, we can understand that our schematic, when it shows us a primary and a secondary, does in fact show us that the primary winding is going to have more resistance than the secondary winding. And if we take a look at our meter, we can see that right there we're just showing a little over one ohm resistance. In other words, almost 20 ohms resistance on the primary and only a one ohm resistance on the secondary. That's pretty much a standard approach for this kind of transformer right here. And now here is a simple pictorial illustration of why those meter tests that we just did worked as they should. For example, what we're showing you here is we're showing you the primary winding. This is the generator, so that would mean power going into the primary winding of the transformer. And we're also showing you the secondary winding over on this side over here. Now what we want to point out is that the electromagnetic field that travels around this wire right here is going to be picked up by the plates around which the winding is wrapped, the iron or steel core, and what's going to happen is that electromagnetic field then is going to travel around those plates until it gets picked up by the secondary winding. One thing you want to notice here is that the primary winding has many more turns in it than the secondary winding. Basically what that boils down to is this. The voltage that's applied here in a primary format, in the case of our transformer, was 120 volts, will only leave on a 24 volt level because of the fewer windings on the secondary side means that it has less opportunity to pick up that electromagnetic field than it had bringing it in over here. The end result being will deliver 24 volts out of this step down transformer. Now using an ohmmeter to test the transformer is certainly one way to find out what it is or isn't going to be able to do. But the other thing we want to point out is, is that when you're troubleshooting a piece of HVAC equipment and you suspect that the control transformer might be the problem, you should be doing a voltage test to find out what's going on. One simple way to look at it is if we have primary voltage being applied but no secondary voltage being delivered, then we've isolated the problem as being the transformer. For example, the one that we did the simple ohmmeter test on, what we were talking about was the primary winding. In this case, Black and white wire means 120 volt primary. If I measured 120 volts coming into this transformer and then switched right over and measured zero volts coming out, that would mean somewhere along the line inside this transformer we're applying power in, but nothing is coming out and that would mean that the transformer itself had failed. That's a simple four-wire transformer. Now what we want to point out is that not all transformers are simple four-wire transformers. In some cases you may have what we call a multi-tap transformer. In this case you're going to have a multi-tap primary which means that you can use it in a lot of different applications. For example, this transformer right here is showing us that we have a situation where we can connect it to 120 volts 208 volts or 240 volts and in any one of those situations we'll still wind up with 24 volts coming out. Now in order for you to determine what this is all about it's real easy to do with an ohmmeter. 
what we can show you is, is that we want to identify the common wire being the white one. That means all of the wiring connections that you would make, regardless of the voltage you're going to connect this to, the white wire would be one of those connections. Now, if we were to connect it to a 120 volt circuit, we can understand that the color code, like the other transformer we showed you earlier, would in fact be the black wire which means that if we make a connection here on our meter, it's showing a resistance of just a little over 20 ohms. But what if we wanted to connect this not to a 120 volt circuit, but we wanted to connect it to a 208 volt circuit? That would mean we'd switch over to the red wire, and we can test that particular transformer winding, and what that shows there is that we're now looking at a resistance of about 53 ohms resistance. But what if we wanted to connect it to a 230 volt circuit? What that means is, is that we can take a look right here on the orange wire, and what we're showing you right there is that we're just at about 66.5 ohms resistance. That's because we are reading all of the available windings on the primary side. We would still wind up, regardless of what we did, delivering this on the secondary, the 24 volts that we discussed. And on this particular transformer here, we can also test the secondary winding by connecting simply to the both leads that lead out from the secondary side, and we can see that what we're looking at right there is in this particular case, here again, we have a secondary winding that only has a resistance of little more than one ohm. And now what we're going to do is show you with a simple schematic illustration here again, this multi-tap transformer that we were talking about. Remember, we said the secondary was still going to be nothing more than 24 volt output. However, what we mentioned was is that we had a connection here and a connection here and these connections equal the 240 volt connection from this point here to this point right over here. We also said that this particular transformer could be connected to 208 volts, which would mean that if we had a connection that just came off the shorter winding, this would be the 208 volt connection. And if we took away even more of the winding, what we would understand here is that would be the 120 volt connection that we showed you.